Hi, this is Eli Tom Melamine, Breatharian, and today we're going to talk about spiritual sex talk. Stay tuned. So what point in your spiritual Breatharian journey did you decide to become celibate? Hmm, good question. And why? And why? Well, first of all, celibacy, the idea, it was, was before I learned about food freedom. But it just came through different avenues of being in the church, how they talk about, uh, how should we say, not to fornicate and stuff like that. So that idea and the religious thought is all, all automatically there. You just really don't know why to the fullest. You just know, uh, watch your sexual energies. So as I, a lot of people who know my food free, freedom journey, how it was a health thing, I was overweight, and I began to lose weight and really get my energy back in tune and stuff like this. The next phase that hit me was uh, when I did run into food freedom and started to read it. It didn't put no restrictions on it, but through energy work, I once met a man who started talking more deeper about sexual energy cultivation. Now, I knew a lot of the scriptures and knew a lot about this. A lot of things he threw at me, I wasn't ready for it. You know, he was trying to relate it in the scriptures in the Bible, and I just couldn't see that. Oh, the fall became because of the misuse of sexual energy. I said, no way. You know, that's somewhere else. He don't know what's happening. But then as I started to learn more about meditation and cultivation of spiritual practices, um, sexual energy cultivation kept popping up more and more about how you could use that energy from the hip area and use it for your overall health. So as I began to even make uh, health changes on myself, dealing with the food aspects, the fasting aspects and stuff like this, meditation was the new world I tapped into, learning about the energy channels of the body. And it just made sense to me. So the first meditation I moved into was the microcosmic orbit. And at the time as I'm working on myself, sex is not even on my mind because in this time period of my life, you know, going through that, situation of healing myself from when I was overweight, going through these different diet changes. The last thing was on my mind was what? Uh, any type of relationship. I was into myself. And I knew how much it took. I was just dealing with a, a, a separation at the time, dealing with a marriage. So the last thing I wanted to be in was a relationship. So the whole impact was on myself. So that gave me a chance to use my sexual energy as a jumping board to see what is they talking about? Is there truth to this? And it was different than the message that was given to spirituality that the church would, would have dealt with restraint. That's not what we're talking about. This was dealing with, all right, this makes sense to me because energy loves to move. So now I'm gonna move this energy in the hip area, move it to different parts of my body so I can see what these writings are talking about. So it was like an exploration, a sexual exploration with myself taking it somewhere else instead of uh, fulfilling your sexual needs physically. And at that time, now listen to this, I can know everybody feel that they fulfilled sexually at different times of their life. So I'm sitting there, you know, uh, late 20s, early 30s, and uh, being in the Navy once before, and I grew up in the life too, now we gotta get into this. Everybody come from different paths. So I felt by that time, I'd have done everything sexual up under the sun because I lived a life of having three or four girlfriends at one time and stuff like this. That's just where I come from. And uh, so I figured, oh, when it comes down to sex, I already mastered that. Not having a clue. I was still a baby wet behind the ears in that journey. But anyway, <laughs> so I pick up these new tools and want to explore it. So sure enough, dealing with the uh, different meditations, I began to see the energy rise very high. There was no shadow of a doubt. Okay, this is I'm tapping into an energy source in myself. So when I ran into food freedom and started to learn about it, uh, and they were talking about this energy, and it did have a section dealing with sexual energy, but it didn't put it on you that this is the all or nothing. You understand? So... As I start working with this, this was fascinating. I kind of put it together to where it's all about energy and the brain needs more energy. And I see all these improvements taking place. And I see these improvements take place with my energy flow 
even before I went into letting food uh, go altogether. So I understood too, dealing with the microcosmic orbit, the sexual energy cultivation, how powerful that was. And then reading the different writings of how we're electromagnetic beings and you magnetize stuff for you. When I started saving my seed to start, you know, being a male, I wanted to save my seed. I do have sperm. Women, I didn't know nothing about that at the time, but I didn't want, didn't care. I, I'm working on myself. So my seed and how my life was going, I started to manifest up to me very, very quickly. And I had this big project that probably would have been over my head. I was building this community center, going into this city, no money really to get it started. But by me learning this new method of energy work, I manifested that. I made things happen. And it wasn't long before I was drawing people, bringing them together, and I knew this was sexual energy. Now, as I'm sitting there and I'm running into food freedom, so here I am, I'm this new being, not eating, not drinking, not having sex, and I'm in my early 30s, and I built this big project, and I'm sitting there, I'm on top of my spiritual game. Woe is me. Not realizing that's why I got to teach people now that the Breatharian path is not a destination. This is a lifelong journey. It ain't like it's going to get cut off tomorrow. And you got to keep in mind, too, that when you get your energy and your light coming off your body a certain way, it attracts all types of people to you. And the energy ain't judging if it's negative or positive. And especially when I'm learning, now they got groups now like no fat. Have you ever heard of that? Well, fapping means another word for masturbation. So they got no fat. And the reason this group was started is because we, the porn industry. Since technology went up, of course, the sex industry went up. It went to a whole nother level than the Playboy magazines back in the past. Everybody's carrying a cell phone. Everybody got Google. And sex is the number one search engine that's looked at hands down. That's why we got to have these talks, especially if we talk about this age of information, age of spirituality. But when it comes down to sex talk, people don't want to talk about it. And we're doing God as spirituality. But it does. It means everything. Sex is the most powerful force on this planet and what a human being has to deal with. It dictates where your life is going to go. All you got to do is look at the babies or the children you made or if you didn't, who you with now, why did y'all get together? It was a sexual union. We're scared to talk about those things, but that's how a person's life is being met, dictated. And it'll be the next series of judgments that have come by because, no offense, usually women are taught to use their sexuality to get things, uh, to use the powers and the energies of a male, you know, just being based in this society. And men quickly understand if you go get certain materialistic things, it could draw sex to you. That's just the nature of the beast. So that is the catalyst that some people was to go as far as to say that sexual misuse is causing all negativity on the planet. All right, this goes far now. But the umbrella opens up so big, so that's why I'm so glad we're having this talk now. So I run into this avenue where I seen by cultivating myself, not only I transformed myself, not only I became a breatharian, I can equate it with also, I took on that journey at the time to hold my seed and start cultivating it. And there was times you'll still get horny and stuff like that. And that's where the excitement came. All this energy is bubbling. But it, by me knowing how to run it now, see, if you try to suppress something, it'll come out sooner or later negatively. Sort of like the food freedom. See, that's why right now when I teach food freedom, I teach sexual cultivation right with it, hands down. Because... See, when you deal with energy, you got like a deep hole, uh, let's say circuit. You got this spinal cord or circuit, and you got a power center up here and a power center at the bottom. For us, you got the spinal cord. The brain up here is a big power center, but the next power center is right here between our legs. For the men, it's the testicles. For the women, it's the gonads. That's a lot of energy that's in the body. This is why celibacy and spirituality Anybody who research it and talk about it, it will start talking about on a higher levels, celibacy pops up and Sankrit Brahmachari. Why is that? Now, of course, everybody's not going to go there. Everybody's not going to understand it because we're sexual creatures. But at the higher levels, without a shadow of a doubt, 
Mastering that will bring forth very great power. Here we go now. Now you mentioned that your ability to manifest was one of the benefits of being celibate. What other benefits did you experience? Health, because it's called an orgasm because your organs is actually to make that sexual fluid. Every time you have sex, your body thinks it's making a baby. It don't look at you just having fun. So it's, it took the best cells in your body just to put that sexual energy together. I don't care what your lifestyle is. It took the best cells that you can produce because it thinks it's going to produce another human being. So it's called an orgasm because in order for that baby to grow a heart, uh, 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 to grow a kidney, it had to get information from my heart, from my kidneys, from my organs. So when you spin an orgasm like that, you're giving up a lot of proteins, a lot of vitamin C, a lot of fructose. And I could go on and on on all the valuable things that a person is giving up in order to create another human being. That's very powerful. And it's, it's these sexual fluids start in the brain. This is a scientific fact before they even get down here and get manufactured to be what? Synthesized into something else. That's why we do practice photosynthesis. There's many levels of it on what our body can do. It's amazing. But now when you come into the spiritual practices, huh? Let's listen at this. On, and what were you talking about? The manifestation? All right, here we go. So now, your sexual fluid, all things, like water attracts light to it. So your sexual fluid, they'll say in the spiritual circles, it is the first manifestation of spirit. It is very powerful. And it changes the way it, it tastes. It smells and it looks based on your lifestyle. Yes, when you eat something, it changes the smell, taste, and look of how the orgasm is going to uh, be. There's people right now, I know this sounds kind of roguish. Yeah, the sperm tasted different when he stopped smoking. You know, or her sexual fluid is right. That goes with the territory. You are what you eat, literally. So when a practitioner picks this up and they start cleaning up their lifestyle, I want the best fluid made as possible that's going to happen naturally. I want it to smell a certain way. I want it to be a certain way. So when you got that type of frequency coming off of you, it draws light to it. So that's why they got what you call doing a rape case or something. They'll bring in a black light or a UV light and scan the area to see if there's any sexual fluids. And the way they sign out their air is because they're glow in the dark. Uh-oh, dang, it glows in the dark. Yeah. So therefore, we live in this big UV spectrum, which is a giant black light, a giant UV light. So when a person is producing the best, their highest degree of the fluids they can with, with a particular lifestyle, so, so it can sm smell different, taste different, and look different, that frequency is coming off them and it's attracting that light. And then when they're not wasting it, where the body has to work to make it over again, this is where it gets good. The body is great absorber of different chemicals, different things. So it ain't like you're going to get sick and it's going to get stagnant. That's what goes in people's mind. That's the old knowledge. No, it's going to be used for something. So to get to a certain place in the body and we be a sexual creatures and would like to move. So that's where we get that horny feeling. Oh, because it wants to move. That's all it is. You know, people wake up in the morning with the heart on, sleeping up under a tent. <laughs> all this other stuff. But what happens is it wants to move because the body, it wants to procreate. But since you're on these spiritual practices, you learn these meditations on how to run it, you look forward to that moment. So now you can start running that energy. Why do you want to start running it? So you can start because the brain needs another form of energy, especially if you're going to go food free. This is what we're talking about. Higher level spiritual knowledge, higher level, how should we say, energy cultivation. You got depoled again, because if you're sitting up here and you got this spinal cord that's running this energy up and down, a big power center up here and a big power center down here, and they're connected, running back and forth. But if you're constantly blowing out this one, you understand, there's even proof now that there'll be a, a little outage in the brain. Just like if your lights cut out for a minute, it'll cut back on, but it cut out for a minute. <laughs> So it has to rebuild that up again, remake it again. And when a person goes into that cycle and keep blowing it out, that's what's happening with that organism. We're not judging if it's good or bad. That's just that organism what it's going through. But a practitioner on these other uh, levels, 
they start wanting this generator up here. It's being made down here. It's coming down here. It's being made into something else. It's just going up and down, fueling the organism. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger, especially when his organism understands the lifestyle, understand constantly to create the best fluids possible. So this UV light that we live in, it makes the aura or the electric magnetic field come bigger off the person, just like that black light in the room. So it's better quality sperm or better quality ovarian fluids that the female just made. So therefore, here's the brain, our thinking mechanism. This is what's coming off of our body too on the way we think. So when you're sit to, sitting there thinking of things, being this power generator, of course you're magnetizing things of your, of your higher quality, what you really want to do. Hands down, you ain't got nothing coming with that type of mind. Because this is all one entity where you deal with the holistic knowledge of the breatharian journey, the spiritual cultivation. This is all one entity is not broken up right now. Physical sex down here, the physical body's going away. It became one with the whole organism. So manifestation, and in the rules of electromagnetism, the higher the electricity, the higher the magnetism. That's what it's all about. We're doing energy work now. So that's why, that's the thrust that got me on this path. And like when I built that community center, some of the stuff I was doing, I'm looking around town looking for a building. Where would I place this community center? Dun, dun, dun. No money, but I'm going to start it. It wasn't long, but who owned this building? That woman right there, what do you want to get done? She said, what do you want to do with it? Well, I want to build a community center. She smiled. That was my dream also. Ding, let's come partners. Ding, I ain't need no money to get us started. So then other things pop in. Okay, I need chairs to put in here. Where are we going to get those chairs? Pretty soon somebody come to the door. I want to get rid of these chairs. Blah, 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 blah. Ding. So that's what you, it ain't a miracle no more. See, in spirituality, they say, you know, they talk about miracles. You ain't living a life of miracle. Everything you putting out there, when you got a high energy vibration comes to you. And your sexual fluid in your body is the highest manifestation of energy you can cultivate to make that happen. Wow. But, oh, go ahead. The great challenge, now that's good when you hear it. The eyes go up, I got the memo. But then sex is the most powerful as energy around. It start attracting all types of people to you, all types of situations to you. And like they say with the no fat group, a lot of the men that testify, I say like before, now since I'm trying to hold my seat, all these women want to talk to me. See, we're like gnats just trying to find, we look for energy. So when it's male, I'm just going to, oh, even females say it. Because the stronger the magnetism, the stronger the electricity. Same thing. We're just going, to, you know, and a female brahmachari has been suppressed due to uh, male chauvinism, you know, in the past. But now in the age we had, it's coming out more and more because she even give off pheromones now that's being, uh, that the male don't have, even though he have the sperm and she don't, that if she understand what that does, whoa, that is very powerful when she start holding her sexual fluids, cultivating it within the practices. Whole different ball game, but it's two different en energies that we're gonna talk about, but I'm coming from my perspective, a male perspective, what happened to me. So, as I'm building this building and manifesting stuff, and I'm this breatharian, I just hit it, I'm in my thirties, on top of my game, but now the next phase comes in. After I build everything, what's happening now? I'm in this world, I'm, I'm even sitting, sleeping up. You see this chair like this? I was sitting, sleeping in a chair like this. Energy high, but I was high for the energy. But now I'm bored. What am I going to do now? I'm here all alone. But in my mind here, I go with my manifestations. I said, well, ain't no women around here. They all eat meat. They're at a low vibration. That's what's going through my head. But then I had to realize, well, I wonder you can't see them. My own teachings is coming back at me at that age. You just blinded yourself for that belief system. Huh? Now, this is my own mind talking to myself. You cannot see no high vibrational women because you just believed them not to be here. Oh, ding. So when I correct my thinking, guess what happened? I made a high vibrational woman. <laughs> Celibate, all this other stuff on a high level diet. Been sore, but I didn't see her because I made myself blind. See, all of this goes together. Even though we talk about sexual energy, high cultivation, but it also our thought process and our belief 
It's still playing itself out at a high degree. All we're doing is rolling with these energies now. So now when I met this person, I'm so glad at least I met somebody who's celibate, blah, 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 blah. She vice versa, finally. But we get into trouble. <laughs> well, that's one thing I wanted to ask you. So you've shared a lot about your journey with food and the challenges right. of going back and forth with food and finally over many, many years letting it go. Right. So what was your path like? Because we haven't talked about this in letting go of the sex and moving Ooh. into being celibate. I'm sure there was a journey there. Oh, absolutely. This is one of the biggest journeys around. So just like I say, I've, I've been on food freedom for 20 years and I tell my little ins and out the baby levels. The t Now we need to talk about the sex. And the sex is a lot harder than the food, hands down. <laughs> food is child's play when it comes down to sex. We got to put that out there. So you go through different levels of that journey, different life experiences. So that's why even when I'm talking about to young people about food freedom, and we got to teach it on this level. Uh, don't think about all or nothing. You know, be user friendly. You still got to create your family. You're creating your kids. You're eating with your kids. And if your spouse ain't got the memo, well, they support me with everything. Okay, y'all got together with sex, and all of a sudden you're going to cut them off talking about you cultivating. It might not go down as happy as you thought it was going to go. <laughs> That's some real stuff that people need to talk about on the spiritual journey. And I know we like to say, well, my spouse is down with it, but that ain't what they said when well, you ain't there. Right. <laughs> There's all types of things taking place. So, on my journey... It ain't been easy on the sexual path because, again, in my track record, you know, um, like I said, it wasn't hard for me in my early years of growing up when it come down to women. You know, different people got their different things. Some people was hoping to have certain things, some, but it don't matter. Sex is sex. Here it comes. So I meet this woman and she ain't been with a man for a while and I haven't been with a woman. It didn't take long before we just hugged a little too long, all right? So... <laughs> <laughs> We're both on top of the world, can't be stopped, but it didn't take long, all right? So pretty soon, the walls start crumbling down. And in her mind, you know, she was in the church at the time, and she talked to me the next day saying, man, as soon as I go into church, that was out of all days, the preacher wanted to talk about uh, fornicating and going to hell. She was sitting there on the front lines, like, before she was out there proud. Now she's like, dang, that dang old Ellie Tom. So... <laughs> Right. And I'm back where I'm at saying, all right, I'm, okay, here we go. The cycle starts. Now this is what people don't want to talk about. Just like with food, you overeat, you be hungry the next day, right? So as soon as you open up that corridor with sex, guess what happens? Dang, because it's the energy. Now the energy's running downward. It want more sex. So you're going down this abyss. That's why they got this uh, song by Johnny Cash, Burning Ring of Fire. And they're burn, 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 burning ring of fire. So we caught up in this ring for a while. <laughs> you're trying to meditate to come up out of it, all right? But you stuck for a while. Here we go. And she's a beautiful woman. I didn't even know how beautiful she was until people had to tell me what I had. Right? But I'm stuck, so it didn't matter. Y'all can have her. You know, that's what's going through in my mind. I want to get out of here. So, 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 but it don't stop there, especially I was, what, teaching at the time, so I'm putting all this other energy, and then I'm still meditating, I'm still high frequency, keeping the diet and stuff, but it's attracting other women. So now you find yourself in this other cycle, this like madness. In other words, I'm at the center still trying to sleep, sitting up, my spine straight up and down, the energy's still high, there's a knock at the door. Okay, who is it? Oh, Ellie Tom, I was just in the neighborhood. Okay, but now I'm about to get in trouble because I'm paying attention is two in the morning. So now you're under attack. <laughs> so I found myself in trouble again, all right? So this spiral start taking place. <laughs> and I'm a young man with no guidance. You're, you're out there. Okay, you're working with these high frequencies, these high sexual energies, but at the same time, and the women is just, you know, sometimes we like to shoot at the man. Well, oh, he's that way. They playing for keeps too. She's knocking on my door at two in the morning. What is that all about? You're supposed to be in the spiritual circles too. You know, but if Susan A come out, she, she's innocent. Nah, I'm just saying. I'm crying now. All right, let, listen. <laughs> 
But then what gets weird, that's why I had to get up out of there. These are true stories. One woman said, hey, Ali Tom, I got a donation for you. Fine. So I'm on my game again. I'm going to go pick up the day, you know, the donation. So as soon as I pull my car up, she got this big pit bull that runs out the house and bite my tire to where I couldn't leave, right? <laughs> I just wanted to get the money and go, all right? Now I got to fix the flat tire. Here she go hugging me, but it's one of those hugs where you just don't let go for a while. So I make a long story short, I'm in trouble again. So I said, this can't be real. This is the power of sexual energy. So I start going in this loop. And these attachments that I had to break from there. What a, what a nightmare in a way. But I got out of there because I, in one way I want to go on this, what, spiritual, sexual journey. I felt that energy when you pick it up, but I didn't know how to control it when I was over here in this other atmosphere. And you are under your own little attack. Here it comes. I don't know if they pick it up or whatever. I don't know. So anyway, I get a timeout. I get out of that situation. I get rid of the community center and I go on my own little private pilgrimage, my own private hodge out in the woods, so I'm safe. I get to start over. So I'm working on the practices, working on my food freedom and stuff, and I know I got a lot of work to do. Now, as I look at what's happening on the world on the spiritual things, especially on the uh, breatharian path or who was out there at the time, I can plainly see, because I started learning more and more about sexual energy cultivation, but I got time to work on myself. So, but I see some people that was out there mainstream, you know, no names or nothing like that. I could tell they was caught up in sexual energy because I could tell how hard that energy start running, especially when you start leaving the wrong food. Yeah, you get to a certain level and degree, more energy is going to come into the body. You're going to get healthier or you should. And a healthy body is a sexual body. It automatically is going to ring out a new blood flow. Blood circulation is going to attract things to you, but without the correct knowledge, and that's why we got to talk about these things, because a lot of people find themselves going down different avenues, and it, it could have been worked out if we know each other's biology, because like I said, women is giving off pheromones. They don't even know they're giving off. off. You understand? Males is um, think something's wrong with themselves, but you're actually producing a thousand sperm a day. That is very powerful. That's nothing to play with. That's an energy source. And then you're thinking something, oh, I shouldn't be thinking like that. And the body don't care, it just want to procreate. So if you ain't got these avenues in line of what can happen to you, or what avenue you could be in, it takes a lot. So now, here we go. I hope this is going on the right, oh man. So then I'm dealing with the one woman still. We still friends, she's celibate. So we got to kind of, okay, if we are dealing with each other, but I know I got to break off from her soon because I want to still cultivate myself. I have sold everything. I'm living out in nature. Uh, this is the time I can work on myself. So I end up breaking from her soon. But that door is still open. So this is what I decided to do. She was a lot older too. So, you know, when it comes down to sex, and I'm realizing in my mind, okay, I'm in my early 30s. And even though in my past I had a lot of women, I said, well, I do got some sexual oats to get off my chest. I had to admit to myself. So let me go get somebody who can keep up with this new fire. <laughs> The older woman was nice, but she wasn't going to keep up with this fire, right? And I'm cultivating the energy. Blah, 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 blah. So I get this younger girl who can really keep up with the fire on that level. We're going to have fun. But I figured, all right, I don't want nobody to get hurt. It was like this new control agreement, you know, where they usually say uh, uh, friends with, what, how do they say that? Oh, friends with benefits, all right? So we was both agreeing on that. She liked what I was teaching her and and I wasn't teaching other people, it just I just had the knowledge out there cultivating myself. So I said, I picked, I created the right situation for myself. And nobody could get hurt because she liked it. It was agreement. It ain't like we're going to get married. You understand? And when it's time to break off, we can break off. But it didn't happen like that. See, sex also gives emotions in a way. Here we go. Wow. Why did that happen? So it wasn't just sex no more. You're getting emotions. You're getting attachments and all this other stuff. So when it does time come time to really break off and you're ready to go off to your journey, it ain't that easy like you thought it was going to be. People don't understand. You get to train off those energies. Y'all lock in. Y'all become one and all this other stuff. So um, to make a long story short on this one, I ended up hurting somebody. It didn't mean it to go that way. It didn't start like that on the beginning. 
But now somebody really got to hurt another being. And you ain't wanted to go like that, but it started because we played with that sexual fire. Just like Johnny Cash said, burn, 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 burn and ring of fire. So I'm like, man. However, I got this knowledge still. I'm still on the breath and path. I know how to run my energy. I'm still talking this mess, right? But I also know I got to really pick up, really get that power aching in. I got to really lock down the sexual energy. Now, here we go. So I break off for her and finally make it out of there. But I decide, too, I move in another situation. Still working on myself. I didn't come out mainstream or nothing because I had a lot of work to do. And I see the people who's already out there. Yeah, that sexual energy was running. I could see it because I could see that. And it's so powerful. There's a show that comes on where um, restaurants and businesses and is in trouble. And this man come through and he turns on around for him and all this other stuff. But this is what he says. He says this is a science. And he said the science to it is you make it comfortable for a woman. And if you make it comfortable for her eyes, the man is going to take her there to spend money there. That was the science behind it. We're animals. We might as well go ahead and fess up. Sex sales on all types of levels. So I'm looking at this. So one day I went to the store for my computer to go get a part. And I knew exactly what I wanted. But no, nah, it didn't happen like that. This woman comes out looking attractive. What is your name? Oh, Ellie Tom. Hi, Ellie Tom. I really feel this piece of fit you. So pretty soon I'm going home and I bought something that, don't, that I didn't even need. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and it ain't hit me until the bill came. But anyway... I said, right there, see, if I didn't bounce back from the sexual game, I would have never been able to notice that. So some people is trapped into doing things that they don't know because they're still trapped into the sexual energy. Look and find it. You don't know how much you're being manipulated out of that. Even down to answering a phone call. Why did you answer that phone call? Oh, because you heard a woman's voice or you heard a man's voice. It happens all types of life. I see both men and women do it. I had this retreat one time where there was a woman kind of mad because the host, was, which was a woman, really didn't show them their room, really didn't show them around. But when the men came, she showed them around. It's so subconscious, it happens on both parties. But when you come into the celibacy journey, you start noticing this behavior. Oh, I didn't know that I would answer this person over this one or favor that. I didn't know that. So you start really working on yourself at a deeper degree so you can be more on a level playing field as you're dealing with people. Whoa. Happens all the time. But anyway, for myself, now I decided, okay, the sexual energy still hit like never before. I know how to work with it. It's there. But now there's still some another level of sexual oats that want to come out of me. So now I'm going to go on my own little pilgrimage again. So I went on my own little pilgrimage dealing with it. And of course... I'm still trying to run the energy, deal with this, but these women is all around me that got me trapped in. I ain't even start my teachings. And this is rough on how the energy is, but I'm noticing this. So now I'm looking at what I created. Again, it was like three women around me, circling around me all the time. And I, it was like I was stuck and couldn't get out of it because I was running real high energy. And it'd be some stuff that seemed like a fluke. You know how people say about food, they try to leave food alone and all of a sudden it appear. Or you try to stop smoking and a cigarette will pop up, same with sex. So I'm sitting up there doing good, my energy is high. And I got a friend who lived down the street. Oh, Ellie Tom, I got that new Vitamix. Come see the Vitamix and help me, show me how to do it. So I go down there and as soon as I go down there and come into the house, she's sitting by the Vitamix naked. And I'm like, this ain't happened before. So I'm in trouble again, all right? So... <laughs> and this is happening repeatedly until I said I got to get out of this but just like the food piece where you think you can't get out of it you're at your lowest it's like this door opens up where so it's the same with the sexual cultivation because it was a point where it seemed like I was surrounded couldn't get out of it and I mean these women was like clockwork and I was under attack in my own mind but that was how the sexual energy. but one day you got stronger you was able to get out of it. You was able to move on. Whew. This is rough, ain't it? And then you begin to say to yourself, 
you begin to see when you're in these practices of running the energy, you can feel the difference from when you have an orgasm from when you don't. Just like food, you know how some people say, I do feel different when I'm not eating or I'm eating this type of food compared to that. It's the same way. So without a shadow of a doubt, you make up in your mind that being in this state, wasting no, and having an orgasm ain't worth it. You don't want to go back there because it builds another cycle and it puts you in another stream of things. So, of course, when I did start my ministry going more launching out, I understand these different women were still attracted to you. They're coming and they're coming off of a light or a magnetism. It really ain't got nothing to do with nothing else because I know where my power lies. It does lie without me having given up my seed. So all this stuff started coming into play. But I learned so much being on this journey. I was even in the cave one time. And this woman came out of where I'm here to help you. All right, fine. <laughs> now she was plain looking, you know, plain, you know, not bad. But as day by day went past, she started looking more and more beautiful. And I was like, what happened? So somebody took a picture of us. And I looked at the picture and I was like, well, who is that standing by me? They was like, that's her. That's her. That showed that my mind set up an illusion. Because all the mind, all the body wants to do is what? Procreate. That's why some people got kids running around. How did that happen? It must have been a cold night. <laughs> Our bodies will literally put illusions on what we see and all this other stuff, just like the food. You thought it tasted a certain way until you got it. So we are an illusion of Maya. So that helped wake me up, and that's when I started learning more about women's sexual fluids and the pheromones they set off. And one of them is called, uh, um, what is that called? It'll come to me. The cuddling gene, something like that, the cuddling. But anyway, what that does is, since she's more weaker in the physical realm on different things, the equal out the playing field, since she usually have a baby and with the baby, and probably need help with different things. She puts out a pheromone that will put something in somebody's mind to make them do things for her. Not just coming, whether it's male or female, because she that equals out the playing field. So I start seeing this pheromone taking place, and I see different men who was like zombies and stuff, didn't know what was happening. They was buying and purchasing stuff they wouldn't even normally do for themselves. But that's what was happening. It was just a pheromone that's put out. So I started noticing this and learning a more, lot more about what the energy the women was putting off and a lot more energy the men is putting off. But you got to learn about your biology being on this. It teaches you so much. Celibacy is more than just, just like the food piece. It ain't about suppressing it or nothing like that. You really going to get education on your thinking, why you thinking that way, why you going in that direction. And um, <clears throat> I run into it all the time, <clears throat> like a phoenix. People do want to launch you in, you know, both male and female, you understand? But at the same time, dealing with that sexual energy, females do come at me because they'll see me doing things, you know, just like you, you carry a lot of energy. And you got to kind of nip it in the bud in the beginning and sometimes she don't even know it. Some is more skilled than others. Comes with the territory. So being on this path, especially on my own journey, I've got hardcore now. I've learned a whole lot more. You know, some things you don't even let get off the ground. Because I did have sexual things go against me in the past. Dealing on this journey since I came out mainstream. But on one level, it wasn't, I know, full of story. I know why it developed. You understand? No seed was lost because I wouldn't even go there because I know the difference of it. That is where my power lies. That's why I'm still floating. However, now you got to nip in the bud and just make better pathways to save everybody to stop the door here and stop it here so it won't get out of hand. You understand? Because people do have those agendas from their backgrounds and all this other stuff coming out. This is powerful. But it's so powerful. That's why when you see those uh, ferals with the cobra up here. And I'm glad I'm at the age where I'm at now. Do, now. Does age make a difference? Absolutely. The age I'm at now, I got different things off my chest. I got a son that's already grown, so I got to play that baby game. Uh, the benefits is I don't have to worry about getting nobody pregnant. I remember one time a woman called me, there's something I want to talk about. I said, well, I know it's one thing. I ain't do it. <laughs> you know, we're just joking around. I ain't get you pregnant. You don't catch no STDs and stuff like that. And the main thing, you ain't got to play with nobody's emotions. 
That emotional thing is very, very tough. Even though it can pop up on other levels, if you ain't there doing that, there is no locking in whatsoever. Because I've also been in situations where, and I just came out of one, where there was men who was attracted to this woman and all of this for whatever happened before I got there. And I run into that a lot. And they see me coming through, they look at me as competition, all this other stuff. But when you out of the sex game, even though there'd be still those energies there, it kind of relieve you to where you can leave a lot more easier. Everybody else is stuck playing that game for whatever reason. So there's so many benefits from this. And again, it manifests up to you 100% more faster than, what, than the person's not holding their seed. So we got to talk more about this. This is just step one of the series of what we're talking about. So we're going to be talking about a whole lot of stuff dealing with this brahmachari, the four different levels of it. So there's four different levels. And uh, like I said, right now, I'm just in the renunciation levels. I can say that boldly. You understand? But this journey over the last 20 years, it has been something. How do you think being celibate has supported your path as a breatharium? Oh. And letting go of the food? Oh, big time. Like we said, here's the spinal cord. I can't talk for other breatharians. I'm talking for me. I'm the one seeing that energy exchange take place for when you have an organism, you don't. For me, <clears throat> it's there and that sperm is being what? Going back into my blood and I live a life of what? Breathing good, doing my exercises, running that energy, meditating. My energy is always high. I always got energy to accomplish things. Uh, how did it help me as a breath there? And I'm not, no, I got to say it as a man, I'm not locked in with no woman fulfilling her dreams whatsoever. That's, you know, that's just me. And I ain't put no contract like that. I thought there is these unhidden contracts and stuff. So I'm doing what I really want to do. And it ain't hurting nobody. So I, I'm out of that game again. Not making babies, no STDs, health-wise. And again, you don't have, um, when you have that orgasm, from those organs and the need to reproduce that again, it makes you hungry again. That's the key. So now since you ain't having that orgasm, See, if anything, you should ask the breath there. And I, not a, I'm just saying, it ain't the last time when you ate. It's the last time when you actually in the cycle of having all those orgasms. Because that energy has to, body just wants to get it back real quick to feed the brain. This is what we're going at to. So this is why I support my journey. And this is my power. And this is my magic. That's why they show you that story of Superman. They had that movie, uh, he lost all his powers when he slept with Lois Lane. They got Samson and Delilah and all this other stuff. That's why I'm talking immortality. When it starts going back to your skin, your your uh, your blood like this, it goes, it helps my skin. It helps keep my eyes clear. It helps me have clarity of thought. All this good stuff. So there's no way in the world it's not even worth it to go back on that other journey. And me being, what, 51 now, there's no, I already played house before. Honey, I'm home. All right, I already did that. It was nice for that time period, but to do that now, that don't fit me or what I want to do. Doing whole other things on the energy level and all this other stuff. So just like we said, Brahmacharya had four different levels. I understand what people at. There's the householder years and all of that. I already did that. So I don't want to go back to that. So now this gives you the avenue for those who want to celibacy journey. I recommend it for those who's there already. Put back those past things so we can open up another avenue on a breatharian journey. And this is a new journey that's in humanity, food freedom. So, and it's all about energy. Grab the most energy you can. Don't give it up if you don't have to. This is what we're talking about. This is the power behind it. Whoa. Now, for those of us um, and for the listeners here who are interested in moving more towards a um, sexual freedom celibate path, what techniques, meditations, energy running, programming, all of that, did you do to help you move in this direction? What are some tools people can use? All right, now step number one, since we know that our physical lifestyle plays a big part in how the fluid is going to come out anyway. So now you, like we're, we're in the age, we are talking about a better diet, exercise, thing that's going to give you better quality fluid. Now, number two is uh, uh, the meditations. All meditations to break up, to deal with keeping energy flowing, keeping energy running. 
but the meditation for sexual cultivation, learn the ones that at least uh, deal with energy running along the spinal cord. This is we're hitting we're hitting the bread and butter now. Like I said, this is like a dipole antenna. There's one energy center up here at the top. There's one at the bottom, and they have to correlate as they're going up and down. And so now, since you're going to and give yourself time, it's not about renunciation. Take a month off. Take three months off from having sex. Do it every once in a while. You understand? Be careful. Be protective. Don't you know what I'm saying? We're talking sexual energy cultivation. There's many people's lives with totally different having unwanted pregnancies happen all the time. Yes, it's going to change your life for what's happening. So think about these things as we start and on the cultivation meditations. For me, the microcosmic orbit was very, very high because you deal with the 12 to 14 different energy channels up and down the spinal cord. You're putting your mind there to open up those energy blockages and you get that energy flowing again. And, and yes, your sexual energy is going to get very high. So that's coming. So that's why I need to be said. If somebody don't say that and that happens to you, which that happens to a lot of people, next they'll find themselves in a sexual cycle thinking that that's it. And the body was just saying, okay, thank you for releasing this. See, horny just means hormones. That's all it is. You got hormones that's going through you. That's healthy. But now you can use those hormones, especially being on a planet journey, to start giving the body, the brain, what it needs. See, the brain needs the most energy within the body dealing with the organs to run. So that sexual energy, bringing it back up, is very powerful for the planet journey to be food-free. So for me, I am on a food-free game on an international level that I know. I'm one of the top ones there, and that is where my power lies in holding my sexual energy seed, period. So now we're going to wrap it up and we're going to talk more about these series that's going to be very important. Yes, we'll talk about the energies of the tantra levels. You know, I dealt with that. For me, I wasn't that successful. <laughs> right. Don't play with fire, you know. And then uh, we've got more coming out on, uh, uh, like we said, once you plant that seed and making babies and all that, we can be a lot more wiser now, especially talking to the younger generation on what direction they go on how they're going to plant their sexual energy because this is the catalyst of having a better life. Wow.